So my name is Sara Perisiu. I'm working at European Space Agency in the Center of Earth Observation, which, which is based in Eternal City, Rome, in Italy. So the Sentinel-1 and 2 are in Earth Engine, and they, they belong to the largest single Earth observation program in, in the world. And along with the Sentinel-3, they will provide 20 terabytes of data per day, which is a huge amount of data. I made a very scientific diagram, and if you can follow me. So if you want to download a raw Sentinel data, one petabyte of raw Sentinel data into, into your regular laptop, it will take you around two years uh, and off, and you'll be very happy. But if you want to pre-process pre it with a thermal, uh, um, um, thermal noise removal, geocoding, etc., it will take you a little bit more, 63 years, but you could be happy anyway, but <laughs> a bit older. So, Sentinel-1, it's an all-weather uh, satellite. It, is, it has a C-band sensor, so no clouds, there are no problem. Um, they can, uh, they are, it is very used for sea ice and Arctic, uh, land surface motion risks, disaster response, and also to, to prevent flood risks. And it's, it's actually my favorite uh, setting out from the Copernicus family. There are three up and running now. All of them are composed at least by two satellites. Sentinel 3B, the twin of the, of the one already there, is following in next year. So this is Sentinel-2. It has a multispectral sensor on board, 13 bands, five time uh, day revisit. The other one is six time uh, day revisit. So they can cover um, every point on, on Earth in a very short period of time. These are some of the most common uses for, for, these, for these satellites. Water analysis and vegetation uh, um, health monitoring, etc. This is a user interface uh, coded by Tyler, which is awesome, and you should follow his, his course. Uh, this, are, this is a stack of Sentinel-1 data, and the high backscatter values will tell you the route of shipping uh, in the Strait of Dover. This is an example for Sentinel-2. We can see the changes on soil and land pollution from the shipbreaking area uh, in, in India. And this is another example of an uh, uh, accidental find of a crack in a glacier made by a user that was playing with Google Earth Engine. Then he tweeted about it, and it became the big news. NASA flew over it. Yeah, this is a really crack. And a nice example of open science with uh, Earth Engine together. And if you want to find more about ESA and Earth Engine collaboration, go to this Medium article. Time, the, the period between two images in a single place in the Earth. How how, how frequent is this? Uh... So Sentinel, uh, each satellite of Sentinel One uh, makes the same orbit every 12 days. So st since there are two of them with uh, 180 uh, degrees apart from each other, it's six days. However, there is an observation scenario, so that they don't operate all over its orbit. If you go on the ESA website and you, go, you, you, you Google for uh, observation scenario of Sentinel-1, you know which modes operate where. For Sentinel-2, the revisit time is five days, so each satellite will do 10, will cross every part of the world each 10 days, with two, five days, and they cover between 66, uh, 56 uh, south degrees and uh, 70 something north degrees. However, Sentinel 2B, which is the twin of the one, it's, it's already launched. They are already both of them up there. But uh, Sentinel 2B, it's very soon starting delivering data. And, um, and one more thing since the, the orbit in, in, on Earth, it's on the equator, you can, we can say they have this six and five revisit day, but uh, near, in higher latitudes, the, the, the orbits will, uh, will overlap. So in polar areas, it's like two, three days revisit time, which is excellent. So adding more satellites like this, following the same orbits, will be like amazing. <laughs>